And we, uh, we've moved through prosperity gospel and word faith movement. We have looked at um, Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons. And tonight we're going to look at, uh, well, this week and next week, we're going to look at Islam. And um, this one is a, this one's a little bit touchy from, a, from different standpoints. But, um, so we'll uh, kind of get going like this. What are some, what are some thoughts about Islam? Uh, I'll put these questions up here. Do you think that um, maybe we view Islam a little differently as Americans, um, we see mosques and um, we, we hear about Muslims and uh, typically Americans get a little, may get a little hesitant, a little gun shy, uh, get nervous, possibly. Um, so anyway, what are, some, what are some thoughts about Islam in general? Radical. Radical, right? They, they can be very radical, yeah. Uh, like Christianity, there's a lot of sects of uh, Islam, so there's a lot of different ones we could spend. Well, I, I've taken courses <laughs> that talk about the diversity in Islam, and so uh, we could spend the rest of uh, this whole study just on Islam itself, but I'm going to kind of narrow it down to two big ones. But radical is one area of, of Islam, absolutely. <clears throat> what else? Any other thoughts? willing to kill for what they believe. Absolutely. Um, they're willing to kill for what they believe. Um, um, they, are, they are not in a, uh, they do not take lightly um, to any type of reference to uh, Muhammad uh, in a negative light. Um, so atheism towards Islam would be met with very strong opposition. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses, we talked about, if you, uh, if you kind of downplay Joseph Smith, they probably just will leave you alone. Um, Muslims, if you downplay Muhammad, um, in sense, with, with kind of an insensitive nature, um, they, they will retaliate a lot of times. So, What about um, anything positive? Anything positive from Islam? They're strong in their faith. Strong in their faith, very strong in their faith, and I think um, I think something that we can learn from all of this study is that uh, we as Christians need to identify certain certain strengths and positives from different things. Um, they're absolutely strong in their faith. They they know this book inside and out. Um, they pray three times a day, and everything in their life revolves around. Uh, their faith and their religion, and I think for Christians, uh, we absolutely could pull something away from that. Um, uh, you know, would you or, or could you or would you be willing to three times a day in the middle of the day stop what you're doing at work, get down on your hands and knees, and pray? But they go bathe first. Do what? They go bathe. Well, they did right. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's some things that they have to do first, right? But just in the general sense, you know, and for Christians, um, I don't know if we're willing to do that. And that maybe, maybe that's something we need to pick up from them. Uh, you know, as we're starting the study of Revelation, and we said it Sunday night, uh, God says, I am. Um, I'm the Almighty. I'm the beginning and the end. <clears throat> and, and we need to worship God that way, you know. And so, so something to think about. What about Christians? How, how should Christians approach Islam or, or Muslims? Because Christians do. We have missionaries in the, in the Middle East and places. I think with Muslims or anybody else, I think that we are to approach them like we're commanded in love and respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's good, yeah. And and I think most most Muslims, especially in America, if you go if you try to get to a mosque or talk to somebody, um, you know, if you go with love and respect and with an openness and, and a willingness to, to have good dialogue, I think most of the time they're willing to talk. Um, I don't think they'll, they'll shy away from you. Um, but if you go in aggressively and, and trying to prove people wrong, I mean, that's, but that's like any, any religion. So, so um, Islam is, uh, <clears throat> is a very unique um, religion. It's a, Islam also uh, respects their holy holidays. Oh, absolutely. And um, they will not work during Ramadan or 
um, other holy holidays, my sister used to, um, she was over the people that worked in the prison system, and mm -hmm. she had, they complained that she wouldn't hire the Muslims. And she told them, she said, the reason that I can't hire them is because they won't work during their holidays, and then I'm left with nobody uh -huh. to to produce, you know, yeah. so, and they asked them, they said, okay, who's willing to work during Ramadan? Not a single one. So, you know, that's pretty firm to risk your job. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's, and that, again, that kind of goes back to their life revolves around uh, their faith. And, and, and that's what's, and, and again, if you can glean anything positive out of this and, you know Christians I think should look at that you know and say maybe we need to be a little stronger in our faith and, and does our life revolve around that but um, so <clears throat> so let's let's jump back and we'll, we'll tie this in maybe a little bit tonight but probably more so next week but let me um, let me read something to you from Genesis and so this comes from uh, chapter 16 and I think when we start reading you'll you'll pick up on where we're at but in chapter 16, now Sarah, Abraham, Abram, excuse me, wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarah said. And so after Abram had been living in Canaan for 10 years, Sarah, took, Sarah his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my servant in your arms, and now she knows that she is pregnant. She despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your servant is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think is best. Then Sarah mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert, it was, it was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord said to her, you are now a child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael which means God hears, for the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. So she gave it, she gave, so she, excuse me, she gave this uh, to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. And so they started the conversation here. And so Hagar bore son, and Abram gave him the name Ishmael. So let me jump forward to chapter 21 <clears throat> here. And, um, and then verse 8 of 21, it says, The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham had a, held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had bore to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not distress about the boy and your maidservant. Listen to what Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the maidservant into a nation also because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set her on uh, her shoulders, and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Bathsheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down nearby, and for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there nearby, she began to sob. God heard her crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying. He lies there. Lift up the boy and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was in the desert, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. So, 
that is the story of Ishmael, Abraham's um, other son, right? Um, and so there's a lot of thought that uh, this is the beginning of the great nation, as we read twice, it says in there, great nation. Uh, is this the beginning phases of Islam? Um, so who's the great nation? Uh, where did, what happened to this guy? Well, if you trace um, Islam back, they will trace it back to Abraham. And so we, we get these, these two different lines, Christianity with Isaac and um, Islam through Ishmael. So it's kind of, kind of interesting. And so, um, so when we talk about this, um, let me just put you up. So there, there is some differences, and we're going to talk about the nation of Islam towards the end. This is not the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam and Islam are two completely separate religions. Um, true Muslims do not associate with nation of Islam. Nation of Islam is a uh, was a um, a political movement that took place in the in the fifties and sixties, but uh, with Malcolm X and Louis Farrakhan, but. Um, so when we think about Islam, does anyone try to try to explain? Anyone going to take a stab at what what they're thinking, what their beliefs are? Any thoughts? Or who are some people? What's their book called? This book. Got a copy right here. Who are some key people? Muhammad. Muhammad, right? Muhammad. He's he's one of them. Anybody else key in this? Is Jesus a key in this? Yeah, Jesus is. What's what is God's name? Allah, Allah right? So they call him God. Um, um, David, Abraham, these are these are some key people too. And this is where Christians will have some some trouble with this, uh, and they, they really struggle with because there's a lot of Old Testament stuff, and including Jesus Christ, he, he's there too. Um, key book. What's what's the book called? Quran, the Quran, the Quran, yeah. So um, um, it's different. It's a little bit of a different read. Uh, if you ever want to read it, so. Um, but uh, it's it's one of the fastest growing uh, religions in the world. Uh, Muhammad taught that there is one God, and that's that's no Trinity. So Allah, and Jesus was not crucified, and that good works are needed for salvation. Now, there's a lot to their, their heaven and their salvation stuff, and we're not going to get into it too deep, especially tonight. Um, but the Quran is, uh, is the Muslim's holy book. Uh, it contains a wide variety of topics in it. Um, they are very protective of this book, uh, very, very protective of this book. As a matter of fact, um, it cannot go below the waist. It's got to stay up. It always has to stay up. So they're very, very protective of this book. And they've got, uh, it, it's got a lot of different things in there. It, it, it talks about, like, I just flipped to it, it says, like, one on women, um, counsel, the spider, uh, the pilgrimage, the night journey, uh, Jonah, uh, the spoils, cattle, um, the table. So, so it's a range of different topics that Muhammad kind of put together. And... Um, and some of it, honestly, when you read this, it really is kind of hard to believe that this is their, their doctrine. But um, when you think about Islam, though, it's, it was an important religion that, that uh, begun by Muhammad about 1,400 years ago. And some people will consider it a heresy uh, because, it's, again, it takes the, holy, or takes the, uh, the Trinity, pushes the Trinity, and, and others just call it a, a false religion. Um, but, but for Muslims, this is very serious. Um, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, uh, typically won't um, come at you if, uh, if you disrespect them. Uh, Muslims absolutely are, are very, um, very protective of this. So. Uh, when, Muhammad, when Muhammad came into Mecca... Um, which uh, Mecca, so when they talk about their spiritual journeys, uh, the pilgrimage to Mecca is important. So when Muhammad came in, um, he came in and, and had, um, I think it was like 400 um, soldiers on horses and uh, had a, had a good-sized army behind him as well. So when he came into Mecca, 
Um, he overthrew the government, he overthrew their army, he overthrew their religion, and it became a worship of Muhammad. And we're going to talk about Muhammad here in a second. But again, it's a works-based religion, and you focus on an earthly person, just like Joseph Smith, just like Russell um, um, from Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, it, it's about a person. It's not about Jesus Christ, God, God in the flesh. So, so that's that's one of the big differences. And so this is where we have to have these these things. Um, so it, it really just means, uh, but but Islam really just means submission. And for those that submit to Allah, uh, they are called a Muslim. And so. So again, I, I kind of put this on here because I want us to think about this. What can Christians learn from Islam? Um, and and I, I've read a lot about them and, and, and taken some, some, some classes with, on Islam. And, you know, it's kind of hard to, to say, well, what can a Christian learn from there? But I, I do. I go back to the seriousness of worship. And I think if you ever have a... Um, if you ever have a, 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 a chance to talk to a Muslim... I would encourage it. I absolutely would encourage it. And I'm not saying you have to necessarily try to convince them of Christianity because I don't think they're going to convince you of, of Islam. But but I, I do. I think about Christians. I think about what God tells us in Revelation as we're starting to study that. And, you know, we said it on Sunday night. Uh, you know, we need to be singing loud. When we sing praises, we need to be singing uh, out of key and loud and off and all the other stuff uh, because it's not about us. It's about worshiping a risen Savior, right? It's about worshiping the God, the, the beginning and the end. We need to be here often. We need to be telling people how much God loves them. And, and we need to be serious in our prayers and in our Bible study time. And I think, you know, Muslims are extremely serious about this. And, and like I said, you know, we were kind of talking at the beginning, they have some rituals that go along with their prayers. But when you think about Muslims as a whole, again, you know, how often do you pray? You know, do you, do you pray three times a day? And when you do pray three times a day, do you get down on your hands? Do you get down on your hands and knees just one time a day um, to worship God? And so there, there does need to be some seriousness. Now, for followers of Islam, uh, again, Allah is a very serious person, and this is a very serious belief. And so they, they attack, they will attack, and there is... Um, a French newspaper that, that made some cartoons. I, I can't remember how long ago this was, a few years back. Published some, uh, some off-cuff cartoon images of Muhammad. And they came after that, that French newspaper hard. Uh, very hard. Uh, physically, uh, with bombs and, and things like that. Um, they, they will absolutely disassociate with you. Uh, if you are raised in the Islam faith or if you're a Muslim and you don't respect that, or if you branch out to something else, um, you know, and, and you compare that to Christianity, well, Christ says what? Forgive. Uh, the sword is mine to swing, not yours. Um, peace. Um, and, and that's, you know, Christ talks about that, so there's one difference. Um, uh, we, we love, right? If, if someone in our family um, does something they're not supposed to, if they say, uh, you know, I don't believe in Jesus anymore, we don't you're out, you know, we, we typically try to talk with them, pray with them, pray for them, do things like that. So there are some differences um, that we see here. But, um, you know, I do go back to that. And, you know, the, the true nature of, of Islam um, doesn't necessarily say not to be aggressive, but it's not focused on Jesus Christ, which says peace and forgiveness, right? And so, so there's a difference, right? And there's a, there's a big difference right there because Muhammad is a human, right? That has human desires, human needs. Um, he was able to, to build this religion. And um, because of this, he wrote in human thinking versus, um, versus godly thinking that, that Christ brought. So, a big difference. Um, so just, just a little bit, and next week we're going to really kind of get down to it a little bit more, but this is just a little bit of the overview uh, because it's very broad and it's big. But Islam focuses around Muhammad. He was born around 570 A.D. in modern-day uh, Saudi Arabia. 
And during this time, there was still a lot of polytheistic religions, just meaning that there was a lot of religions that had multiple gods. There wasn't uh, a single one. And Christianity was the lone religion that said there's only one God. And so uh, around 610 AD, um, around the age of 40, Muhammad received his first revelation. And this is from Angel Gabriel in a cave. Uh, near Mecca. And so inside the, the cave, Gabriel dictated to him the Quran, uh, their holy book. And, and, it, and, you know, it's kind of interesting because you think, well, that's kind of crazy. Um, but you compare that to our study in Revelation. So what is John doing right now? He's writing down what? A, a vision that an angel is showing to him, right? So, so you kind of like, well, are they that different? Well, yeah, there's, there's some more differences there because uh, Gabriel was dictating all this stuff and, and Muhammad was writing it. And then, of course, Muhammad kind of goes back and adds and, and changes it a little bit, um, whereas Christ was controlling the angel and showing and allowing John to see certain things. But, but uh, the Quran is it's divided into what they call surahs. Uh, it's 114 surahs, chapters, and uh, it's got over 6,000 uh, different verses in it. Um, and so uh, about 610 A.D., he received his first, ten, or first revelation. And then for the next 23 years, he received more. Um, but he didn't finish the Quran, and it was completed by a group of Muslims uh, later on. And so this is what started to divide the Muslims. So much like Christianity, uh, where where we have the, uh, the early church and then uh, from Acts, right, and the church is going and we have all the churches and so forth and so on and then we get uh, Martin Luther and Martin Luther takes 95 thesis and he stabs it on the door and he says, we're not going to follow this anymore because the church had, had become pretty much Catholic, right? It was, it was kind of a Catholic-based church. Martin Luther the, or, uh, stabbed the 95 Thesis on the church, and he says, we're not going to follow that, and this is the birth of Protestants, right? And then so we had a Protestant church. We had a kind of a Catholic-based church. They started going separate, and then the Protestant church started saying, well, we believe this because John Calvin, or the Methodists because of John Wesley, and, and then they split, and then the, Cal and then the Baptists go from uh, regular Baptists to Anabaptists, which are the Mennonites and the Amish and so forth and so on. Church of Christ comes out of the Baptists. Uh, Presbyterians show up. We just branch out, right? And that's just the, the Protestants. So to the Muslims. But their big thing was what we get, the, the Shia and the Sunnis uh, are the two big, uh, big ones, uh, especially the Sunnis. And it, they were divided over a similar thing. They were upset on who was going to finish the Quran. So who got to finish the Quran? And so uh, the Sunnis um, thought that there should be some elite members of this group, and they would, they would come together, and they would be Muhammad's successor. They would follow him. Where the, uh, the Shias uh, wanted Muhammad's, Muhammad's relative, is specifically, uh, which is it's his son-in-law, but it was also his cousin. I don't know how that works, but it was his cousin and his son-in-law at the same time. So that's, that's their big divider. And so when we hear things about Muslims, um, there's two different main groups. Now, there's some other smaller groups that are around, but these are the two big ones that we hear a lot about. Um, and so uh, the Sunnis are about 85%. About 40 different countries have those, uh, where the Shias are the uh, Irans, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, those are those types of uh, Muslims. Um, <clears throat> oh, Chad. Will help. <laughs> okay. Next slide. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about their doctrine for a second. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. You may have to start over. But anyway, their doctrine. Um, Muslims see Islam as one true religion uh, of God, which has always existed, much like Christianity sees that uh, Christianity is the one true religion. So again, there's some similarities to a lot of this stuff, and, and I think the similarities come because we all started from the Old Testament, right? It, it kind of branched there. Um, 
But the first prophet of Islam was not Muhammad, but it was the first man, Adam. So they kind of look at it a little bit different from that standpoint. Adam submitted to Allah, so Adam was a Muslim. Muslim uh, or Muhammad is considered as the final greatest in a succession of prophets, including Adam and Moses and Abraham and David and Jesus. So here's their difference. Uh, Jesus is a prophet, a very important prophet. They, they will tell you, absolutely, extremely important prophet, but they don't have the New Testament, right? The New Testament's not part of this. But Jesus is very, very important. But he's a prophet. With Muhammad following and Muhammad being the final and the greatest of the prophets. So, so there, as far as, as far as Christianity goes, there becomes one of their big errors. That there was somebody else that was greater. So this would be like us saying that Paul uh, is, you know, uh, uh, or we could even say John, right? John's the last of the apostles to go. John was the last and the greatest, greater than Christ. And we know that that's not true. And so, um, so they see these Old Testament figures as very important key figures, and Jesus as well. But, uh, we, again, uh, Allah is the only one. Uh, there's no trinity. It's not part of that. And so, um, Muslims maintain that they believe all the prophets, but that Muhammad is the final prophet or the seal of the prophets. And because of this, Allah used him to restore true teachings of the earlier prophets, which had become altered or corrupted. And this is important. So the reason that Muhammad is so important is because he went back and corrected the errors that took place prior to him. So that would be like um, John going back and correcting parts of Scripture that he felt had been corrupted by mankind. So again, this is a big difference between our Bible and their Quran. That their Quran needed someone to come back and correct. Uh, our scripture we, we deem as what? Infallible, uh, inerrant. It, it's, there's, no, there's no wrong, there's no lies. It was finalized because it's the word of God, right? And we, we trust that, even when we talk about difficult subjects. So Muhammad <clears throat> excuse me, was able to go back and take the writings from Gabriel, make the corrections, and then he would kind of go back and clean and, and add and take away and do what he needed to do uh, to that book. Uh, Muslim, Muslims believe in the earlier revelations from God's prophecy, um, especially the, the, the Torah, the Torah. This is the, the Pentateuch, what we study. So they, they dive into the first five books of the Old Testament. They're, they are good with those. Those are important to them. Uh, Psalms, they like the Psalms. Um, especially the Psalms of David. Now, there's three different authors in the book of Psalms, but they like David's Psalms. And then uh, they like the Gospels. They do like the Gospels. Uh, but they have altered the Gospels in a way because, again, if they kept the, the Gospels as truth, they would see what? Uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not just another prophet. So, But they do like the Gospels. They, they do accept the Gospels. Uh, and so what about Jesus? Uh, uh, Isa. Isa is what they call Jesus. Uh, he is one of the prophets, the messengers of Allah. They do believe he was born of a virgin and is, uh, is the Messiah. However, uh, they do not believe Jesus was God incarnate or that he was God, the Son of God. So... Uh, because this would, this would throw off Allah, in a sense. Um, and so let me, let me go ahead and push these down here. Uh, what they call uh, uh, Talhid um, is the concept of God's oneness. Uh, so if a Muslim begins to talk about what they call the Tal, uh, W has an L sound, so the Talhid, um, God is, is one. God is not three. So uh, we, we subscribe to what? God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. So they like the Gospels. The Gospels are important to them. Um, Jesus is extremely important. Uh, he's not Muhammad, the final prophet, but he's extremely important. But if God, uh, if he was God incarnate, then Allah would not be one, right? Allah would now be two. Uh, so this would throw them off a little bit. 
And they also believe uh, uh, Shirik is what they call it. Um, Shirik is a maybe the greatest of their sins. This is where you believe in uh, polytheism. So when they see Christians, they identify us as polytheists, meaning that we worship three gods, not one true God. So they see us worshiping um, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Where in Muslims, it's just Allah, one God. So uh, shirk is a, is a very big sin for them. As a matter of fact, this is what will cause them to, to disown you or push you away is when you accept this because this is uh, polytheism, this is idolatry, you're, you're worshiping something else besides, besides um, Allah himself. And so uh, we'll kind of conclude on, on this one. I know it's a little bit early, but the, I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want the, the, the next set kind of flows better. It's about this book, but I thought it was interesting because salvation for them, Jesus did die on the cross, but he wasn't actually crucified or did he have a, uh, he didn't rise from the dead as, as, a, as a bodily resurrection. Um, the Quran puts a lot of importance on heaven and hell. Very, very heavy on salvation as far as their version of salvation and judgment. Very big. Um, and so salvation in Islam, uh, it, there's scales of justice. And you, you maybe heard about this with Islam, um, where they, they outweigh other sins. And so, for example, if you commit the sin of polytheism, that's one sin that is, they, they use the scales of justice, right? That's one sin that's going to be so heavy that your works may not be able to outdo that. But... Um, you know, it can be one of those things where uh, when they pray, they have very specific prayers at certain times of the day. And maybe, for example, maybe they didn't face direct east when they prayed. Maybe they were off-center a little bit. Well, that could be a sin. And in that, that sin that dropped your, your chart down a little bit here, they could do something that a workspace faith that would raise it back up. That makes sense. So uh, the religion is very, very much about works taking the place of sin. And, um, and again, when you, when you point to this, and this will make a little bit more sense next week, but when you point to this, you think about Muhammad, this was something that he, he preached a lot of because this was, this was what? Allegiance to him. So he got to make the rules. So he would say, here's your sins, here's what you have to do um, to kind of outdo those or, or to get rid of those sins. And so it, it's a very, very works-based faith uh, type of religion. And... Um, and so really, you know, the, the, big, the big takeaways from kind of part one to this is they go back to the, the beginning of Genesis through Deuteronomy kind of the same way that we do. Um, but Abraham, their line begins with Ishmael, not Isaac. And from Ishmael, uh, we get all of these great Old Testament people like David and Jonah and so forth and so on, Moses. But... Um, and again, we get Jesus. But the big takeaway is that there's just Allah. There's no Trinity. And Jesus was, was a great, great prophet. A Messiah in a sense that, that he was a salvation in a way, but he wasn't the salvation because, again, if he was God, then, um, then that would throw things off. And this is where, this is where Muslims kind of get tripped up at a little bit is with, with Jesus because they do consider him as the Messiah in a sense, but he's not greater than Muhammad. And if he is the Messiah, then how do you worship him and that throws off Allah, if that makes sense. And so they, they, do, they struggle with Jesus quite a bit. They struggle with the Gospels. Now the Gospels in their version have been, have been changed a little bit um, based on Muhammad stuff. And, and again, they have a, a religion that, um, that they will fight for. That they, that they would fight for. Now, Christianity has come a long way in that sense because of the Crusades, and this was Christianity versus Islam, fighting you know, over Jerusalem, who would get Jerusalem. And, um, and so, um, so we see that it's changed a little bit there because we don't see Christians blowing up buildings. <laughs> They're not supposed to be blowing up buildings, whereas sometimes Muslims will give that, that okay in certain things if it, was, if it was vindicated by their belief system. But...
Um, anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and stop for tonight here with that, and then we'll just kind of talk and questions and thoughts.